Hey guys, Spencer here. In this video, we're going to be going into more into depth on how to apply thousands or hundreds, hundreds or thousands of decision trees within one forest, or as you might call it, random forest. In the previous video, we went over the basics on how to apply the decision tree. Also, we went over the data set and the theory on what we are going to be doing. So I highly encourage you to check it out. I tagged it up here. Make sure you check out that previous video so that we are both on the same page. So without further ado, let's get down to it. So anyways, let us do the random forest. This is the grand finale, random forest. Now, there are a bunch of terms slash uh, terminology that I have not discussed prior, but we could essentially hyper-tune the random forest to do whatever we would want and to essentially find what works best. So in this case, uh, within the cart, uh, not the cart, within the carrot, <laughs> within the carrot uh, library, there is a function called train control. Uh, this is really, really great to essentially find out uh, what type of tuning um, strategies that you can actually implement. And I encourage you to take like uh, take a second to take a look at what that function does. Let's be name this uh, control and then train control method. Uh, we're gonna have like repeated CV, which is repeated cross validation. In a previous video, I, I went over cross validation. The repeated part is just doing it over again, essentially. Uh, so we're gonna have five folds, and we're gonna be repeating uh, about like twice. You can do that. Unexpected equals. Uh, repeated repeats yeah I think it's repeats yeah cool 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 all right once we have this we're gonna have our metric we'll be basing this on accuracy accuracy and then we're gonna have a tune grid this is another hyper tuning parameter uh, where essentially for this you could just input the number of uh, features that it randomly selects as part of the random forest infrastructure and in this case uh, it'll just be dots mtry is equal to um let's be going like one to ten or something like that colon ten run that so in this case i'm just gonna have ten or it's gonna be randomly selecting one through ten uh, columns in order to build up its individual tree and by default uh, the random forest package has 500 trees so i'll just leave it there um but there's like a paper that um, stipulates that 1500 trees is a good number of trees when you have huge huge amounts of data and then after that it just adds an additional cost to your algorithm and how long it would run uh, anyways once we have our tune grid let's create create the model all right so i'm gonna call this the random forest model and what we do here we just call the train function this is also a carrot uh, but it, this is actually going to create our model. And this might take a few seconds, if not a few minutes, but um, <laughs> if you have a huge data set, it's obviously, obviously going to take a lot longer. Um, but this should not take that long. So I'm just inputting the variables as what is necessary in order for this to run smoothly. And let's get that tune grid. Let's go to tune grid. Tune grid, tune, tune, tune grid. Cool, and then I think I need my control. So tr control is equal to control. Cool, let's uh, put this all on separate lines. So for, oops, for better readability, metric, tune grid, tune grid. So all of our metrics are here. Uh, that's all this right, yes. Cool, let's run this over here and let's run that. So this is gonna take a while. It might take a few minutes on my end. Um, Great. So now that our model finished, it didn't take that long on my end. Uh, we have a bunch of metrics that we can take a look at um, based on all these accuracies. It gives us kappa as well. Kappa is essentially a classification accuracy, but it's normalized uh, based on its corresponding data. Uh, but anyways, let us actually get our predictions over here. Actually, no. First, before before we get our predictions. Uh, let's look at what type of variables are important. Uh, there's this really neat function, var imp, and then all you do is just pass in your model in here, and it gives you a list that's already sorted as to which variable is uh, most important in explaining the variability. Yeah, 
So it gives us a bunch of values over here. And yeah, so you can do with what you think you can do. Uh, you can start slicing out values that don't lead to a lot of relevance to your overall model uh, for faster run times. It's more of like a complexity issue, uh, but you can use it for a variety of other things as well. Cool. So now that we got that out of the way, let's do the predictions. Get the predict R. Let's see, yeah, predict RF random forest. We predict. All we do is pass in our model, and then we pass in the test. Remember, the test here is the sample data set, and also we don't need to do the balancing because we the balancing part is only for the training of the model, and our testing is literally what we'd be passing in as our test uh, inputs to see how well our model performs. Cool. So once we have our prediction over here, we can run a confusion matrix uh, just to get the accuracies based on its clear cut rules on its threshold, which is 0 0.5 by default. So let's do a confusion matrix. That's also in the caret library. Data is equal to equal your pred ref, and then you're gonna be referencing your test class. So it spits out this value. The accuracy here is 99.2, which is a, uh, okay, cool. Um, but there's one note of caution because uh, this is so clear cut, there's a threshold in place. Um, it's not really like entirely representative of what we have going on. The sensitivity level is like sort of high um, or sort of low, in fact. Uh, but we will also be using an additional factor, the area under the curve, or the rock curve, which stands for receiver operating characteristic. But it's just, I just say rock or ock for area under the curve. Anyways, once we have our confusion matrix, um, let's get the rock curve into play. And I use the library of uh, this P rock over here load that in and we need, now need to like redo our predictions in the form of a probability because within the rock universe uh, the threshold is not defined and when i say threshold it's the deciding factor on whether or not our prediction is going to, going to denote the prediction value as zero or one so if the threshold is 0 0.5 by default we have a prediction score of 0 0.7 then we will predict that the value is a one in this case it'll be a fraud and so on and so forth with the raw curves we don't have a threshold and it actually just judges it based on a variety of thresholds so we have a very nice range and we're gonna have a really neat graph associated with this roc curve so let's do this prediction for curve or for rock um there's gonna be a predict and we'll be passing in a model and we're passing our test, but now we are going to change the type to a probability over here. Once we have our probabilities, we can now get the prediction, uh, prediction representation of our fraud prediction cases, not uh, cases over here. So we have rock underscore RF. We are going to assign that to the literal rock uh, function, which is in P rock. We're going to be passing in our test class and then we are going to be passing in our prediction uh, for rock and now here we can be passing in our second value our second column because our first and second columns are representative of the values for zero or one in this case we want to see the um, representation for the fraudulent cases hence why i'm choosing the second column all right so let's run this is setting up is levels and direction, so that's good. And now uh, let's get the rock RF area under the curve. So I just do area under the curve and pass in the rock RF over here. Sweet. Now, once I made some more room, then we can actually plot this. So over here we can have plot ROC and no, actually we can have test of the class and then we have the prediction uh, for rock I think that's good no now we are going to plot our RF 
uh, or rock RF and under the curve we are going to name this um, let's see ROC for random forest and we're probably gonna make this green yeah make that green over here sweet and then once we have that going on we need to actually make sure we call it green um, and then we can plot this what's it uh rock rf that's right here we go yeah sweet so this is what our um, our rock curve looks like and the area under the curve when i say that it's essentially the area between this um this slope and the area of this curve to that slope that's pretty much what area under the curve is the higher the value the better our classification model is uh, real quick, I will paste out the accuracy right here, our area under the curve, which is 0.9763. So let me actually put this awk, um, random force, random force. We can paste that right there. So 0.976. Sweet. Now as a baseline, let's compare this to the typical logistic regression. Now, you should know by now what logistic regression is, and if you don't, please check out my other video. I detail that very in depth on how it's formulated and constructed and what you need to do in order to actually run it. Um, but in this case, I already went to the point, I already wrote out all the code, and we can now just compare the logistic regression to that of the random forest when we are predicting fraudulent cases. So uh, we get our model in, um, and do not converge. Okay, we don't need to worry about that. Uh, we got the predictions for our log models. We get the ROC values. Now we can actually plot. And as we can see here, it looks like the random forest values uh, for the area under the curves are much more... Um, they're, they're, you want a curve that looks like that instead of the logistic regression, which has a very sharp edge associated with that. It looks like a triangle wedge like some lettuce leaves um but anyways yeah um comparing the values of the areas under the curve uh, we have 0.976 for random forest and 0.919 for logistic regression wow that was a lot but i had a lot of fun doing this i hope that you enjoyed this video random forest and decision trees are by far one of the one of my most favorite algorithms to utilize. It's really easy to understand and it's almost applicable to any type of problem that is out there. In the past, they've used this type of algorithm to identify spam content within like Gmail, for instance. Uh, they have a really nice filtering system, but then now they use probably like neural networks. But uh, using Random Forest is extremely, extremely worth it. I do highly encourage you to use this as much as possible, but you know, there are maybe other algorithms that are out there like Adaboost or XGBoost, so on and so forth, and I'll be covering those in a different video. But please make sure that you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. <laughs>